Okay guys, this is gonna be a really quick video regarding how to... Not really shim, but uh, make your gun quieter. The, but this is not like the beginner thing. Uh, I mean, most of the time they just... There are a lot of YouTube videos about how to shim your gun. Go through these videos if you only have like one airsoft gun or two or a couple of them. Less than half a dozen, I'd say. You just shim it and need to adjust motor height most of the case. It's gonna be okay-ish, alright? Sometimes you even get good results if you're lucky. And that's the part, it's lucky. So, why does the gun sound bad? Most of the time it's actually the... Okay, the pinion gear with the bevel, alright? Because your motor, I mean, in theory, it should be like perpendicular to your bevel gear, but sometimes they shift. They could tilt, which is probably a much more common issue. All right. So how to check on it? I know there are like 3D print files for these, but I mean, maybe you don't have a 3D printer, right? Maybe you're just not good with 3D. I'm actually good with it, but uh, I was in a hurry and I didn't want to do anything about it. So this is what I did. All right, this is assuming you, I mean, when you are at this stage, you, I suppose you are already into taking your own guns and you already own quite a bit. So this is the VFC gearbox, ignore it, I just had them lying around. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay, so for this, I want you to, what's important is I have to measure my grip. All right, ignore the stupid Portuguese law requirement paint all right so i put this in i want to know if that if this is perpendicular and when i put in the butt plate this hole is gonna line up perpendicular like in line with this groove right here this is a telling groove one first thing change check if it's your grip can shift okay you have these two grooves and you have the groove on the gearbox and uh, sometimes they shift. This one is okay. This, this is within what I think acceptable. Still, you should check again, like once you bolt it on. Like once you check after the alignment you on the holes, you should know the preferable way to bolt it on. So the difficult part is I need a rod that is connected to this point, goes through here and is limited. That's where the 3D print comes from. Uh, what I did is I took... So you in theory, you could just get a stick that is more or less the side of this hole, tape it, which is the, why there is a tape. You put it in there, but the thing is you need a hole. And this hole needs to be as perfect as possible in the middle of your stick. Because you have this hole, if it's not in the middle, you will tilt it. All right, you're gonna have something like this and it's gonna be on an angle. And the longer your stick, which you do need to go through the grip, the more it will influence your results. So this thing has to be perfect and drill that with, I say with a hand drill, is actually pretty difficult. I do think you will need a drill press, but um, I mean, you can get these real cheap. You can just have a, like a drill press mount for your hand drill. You can get these for like 20 bucks. And next part is how to align it. So that's why I said you should have a couple guns. And this is just a, a old gas pistol barrel, gas rifle, don't remember. And I just use this groove, which is usually for the bucking, to define where the hole is. And you can see it's damn near perfect in the middle. So I just clamped it. I use the surface. This flat surface, I just grabbed a really long straight Allen key and I just tried to level it as, uh, as perfect as possible. So you grab, um, yeah, don't have much, but let's say you have something straight and you just bolt it to there, all right? And you try to level this as flat, parallel as possible to your clamping wise and you just drill a hole there using this groove as a help. So I got this hole and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's 
very near and yeah, near perfect so your regular gun this hold you like three millimeters 2.9 ish something which is perfect that's it like the outer diameter of m3 screw is like 2.89 something like that then i just wrapped aluminum tape around this so the reason i chose aluminum tape is first they stick really well second they are slimmer than um, than duct tapes so i put this on align the screw all right i'm just partially close the gearbox Building this thing took me like five minutes ish, and you can see now I have this stick that is parallel to that uh, line, it's already in line to that thing. All right, and now I'm gonna take just let's say any grip. First, uh, let's talk about how you define the motor to your gun. All right, you can see here the hole here. All right, you might think you define the motor by having the back plate and having the front hole to define the motor. No, you you don't want to do that. You want to use this one defining the motor and this hole right here, okay? That's where your motor goes in and you define it like that. The first thing I did was, before I, of course, put this on, I put some tape on the motor. So I know when I'm in the region of my contact in my bevel, the optimal height around that region, I mean, this is wide, right? So it can have all, I mean, it still can slip in, but with almost no wobble, that's what you want. Then I enlarge this side of the spring, all right? Because when you, this spring, if you put it regularly, like this side, you put it on and you put in this hole, it can get into the side of your neck and impede your motor actually to be tilting, all right? So it's push it to one side because the spring just gets jammed on one of the sides, especially these little legs right here, all right? You put here and you can, we push it down, it gets something like this, all right? It gets the leg and then squeeze part of it into the hole. That's why I made this side bigger, the one that goes into the grip. And when I push it, it's impossible for the spring to have a space. Actually on this one, it's okay. -ish. Next thing you want to do is enlarge this hole a little bit. First, it needs to be at least wider than this hole. So during the shift, you know that uh, the motor neck is still gonna be defined by this hole here and not this one hole here because we don't want side movement neither. So let's go put in our grip with our stick in it. All right, it goes in. Perfect. We hold it straight. And now we are going to check how straight this is. And we take the back, back, back plate, slide in. All right, it actually fits. So that's good. That means you're not too off. And now look at this. I'm not sure. If, yeah. See, it's pointing right at the back of it. Okay, it's not, it means this grip is off with this plate on, right? It's not by a lot, but within the wiggle range, I have my stick. This is all the way in the back. So it means this grip is, well, would not be a good candidate for this gun right here. That's if you have a lot of grips, you can experiment with them or you can have different bug but plate, I mean, you can find one that is somewhat compatible. If it's bigger, it's even better because you can modify these two holes and you just shift, use a Dremel, shift this thing around. Once you have the position you want and you just enlarge these holes and when you bolt it on, remember to put in the right place. Now, moving on to that is you also want to define your motor very well to the back plate. You see the wobble around here, that's quite substantial. And if you adjust the height of it, if it gets out of that hole, that's even a lot more. So you have side, 
front and back and twist. So once you have the back plate dialed in in your grip, what I did was, yeah, not this one here. This one here is I just laser ring. I mean, you could, if you don't have any tool, you can just wrap tape around here. In my case, I just, I found I use a file. Uh, this is actually a C shape. I just clamped it down. This is actually the packaging material you, if you buy an aftermarket inner barrel. I found it fits pretty well and look at that. It's like it doesn't move at all. All right. So this one is very well defined on that. Uh, and this is a alternative to uh, I would actually prefer if I have a grip like this, I need the back plate ended up just being perfect. I, actually, I would prefer that. But the alternative is some of these grips, you have this two piece, right? The grip is like this. You put your motor in and you put this on and you squeeze in and you close the plate. I know there are lots of people against it. This one is, uh, some of them, you don't have this separate piece and you just directly clamp, that's bad. You know, because this whole shift and your motor just gets bent in it. But this one doesn't, this one actually moves directly inwards. Then you close it. Okay, so it's actually the straight movement. And one, with this one, what you get is, you get a bit of front and back movement. All right, I was in the process of shimming it, but I'm, it's getting so slow, I might just use hot glue and just adjust it on the go. And the adjustment, as you predicted, I would just uh, put this on. All right, slide it in. And just, okay, that fell off, that's not right. Put it back in. I think it needs to be inserted before that, yeah. Then push it out and see about where this thing needs. And you have to check the if the screw is actually parallel to the, uh, straight to the uh, rod. And this is actually pretty good. You can take a look. This this line it should be flat with here. This face is flat with this because of bad plate. Okay, this thing cannot go out. And when I'm moving this one, when I'm keeping the parallel around here, the hole on the inside is actually pretty straight. Now I'm saying this is gives me that adjustment. So I know this face, this angle is correct. And now I can just adjust it up and down to get it right by just adding tape around here to get it. Uh, do note that this plate gets pushed against this one, so you have to take into account, yeah, this is the height you get. You just around this area, make sure it's tight around this area, then you adjust it. Now, as I said, I would not, I would prefer a solid piece. This won't, wouldn't be as stable as this, so this one gives a little bit more adjustment on that. Uh, and I use, uh, once you adjust this right, you have reduced wear and noise. I mean, this motor head, all right? You got no chip, no nothing. The only thing is a bit shiny, but this motor I use it for, I think I have it for like two years. This thing went through, went through like tens of thousand rounds. This was in a DSG. All right, and there's absolutely no wear on the motor head. It's a little bit shiny, that all, you know, a bit dirty, but no chip, nothing. All right, so that it goes. I know there are people who have done like the alignment check before, but uh, I never like found really a good solution and I actually like these grips here. So allow me to adjust that. And in case if you have one, please, if you have a lot of guns, or you can just buy it, quite a few back, uh, back plate. Uh, just make sure it's not exactly aligned because 
Now you can actually use this one. If I were, I would just take this one. Uh, it was a bit to the back, so I have to shift this to the back. I would just enlarge the screw holes a bit this side and uh, take a Dremel and uh, Dremel out this face. So I like shift the screw holes downwards, Dremel this out and uh, use it. Then it should be give you the as perfect as possible fitment on it. Now let's check again. That's on. If this is, this angle is right. Yeah, this one is not really good. Don't know if you can see. I will put this hole as parallel as possible. And if you look at the butt plate, it's slightly angled. All right. This one is not flush with that. In the inside, it may be a little bit different. Let's see if, if I push it all the way inside, if it's going to be the same. I think this was an old ICS plate. Yeah, it's stiff. Yeah, it's flush. So, yeah, this one, for example, this grip is. I would try to find a other solution. Oh, and regarding the grip, you should sand these faces. So, when you tighten it against the gun, the grip should sit on this face. All right, should sit here and not against the gun's receiver. Then you just totally throw that off. You will want like a visible gap so you know this thing is sitting on the gearbox and not pushing against the gun. So with this grip, for example, at least with this gearbox, you have different contact angles and uh, different pushing plate as well. I, I would change that. Otherwise, it's uh, you would have to sand You would have to sand this face so it's perpendicular to the motor, shift this to the size, get this hole to tighten down. Yep, but uh, this is how I did it. Take an old barrel, use the hole pop groove as a guide, drill a three millimeter hole. I mean, use a three millimeter drill, and normally the hole is gonna be like 2.9 something, not gonna be exactly three, uh, which is perfect compared to these bearings. Really, very little wobble. I mean, this setup is pretty damn solid, all right? And you can do this at home, it doesn't require anything. All right, okay, thanks for watching.